Welcome everybody. So what I have in store here is I'm provided the midpoint and what I want to do now is find my endpoint. So huh. to do a problem like this, what I, what I like to do first of all is to start off by plotting the point. So I can kind of get a, a visual representation of what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm going to first plot the midpoint, which again is between the two endpoints, but we only know one endpoint. So I have negative 6, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 2. That's my midpoint. And my endpoint is at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so if there's my endpoint and there's my midpoint, I can probably estimate that my new endpoint is probably going to be like something over here, right? Or like right there. Um, but the problem is, I don't know what that value is. Right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what the endpoint is. Now, when we look at the, our midpoint formula, x1, x2, y1, y2, those represent the, end, the x and y values of our endpoints. But we only know one of them. right? So one thing that I can do is I can take that formula and say, all right, well, I'm going to plug in one point. And you know, let's just pretend that's x1 and that's y1. Right? We don't know. What we are trying to find is x2. Y2. We know x1, y1. We don't know x2, y2, right? Or vice versa. It doesn't really matter how you label them. But that's what we need to find. So since we know this and we have a formula, let's plug it in. So the midpoint equals um, x1, which is negative 3, plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1, which is negative 5, plus y2 divided by 2. OK? So that's what we know, right? Now, one thing that's very important is the midpoint. I have m there. That represents the midpoint. But it really doesn't represent a, a number, right? Unlike d distance represented a number, right? That's the distance between the two endpoints. But midpoint actually represents two coordinate points. So we're actually figuring out a third coordinate, right? When we have the at two endpoints and we want to find the midpoint, that's going to be a third coordinate, which I'm going to call x3, y3 which is really the coordinates of the midpoint. So do I know the coordinates of the midpoint? Yes. So I can say, all right, here's x3 and here's y3. Let's plug in these values. Negative 6, negative 2 is equal to all of this jazz, right? I'll just rewrite it, I guess. OK. So what's important about this is we still need to solve for x1 and y1. And how are we going to do this? Now, again, remember, remember these are, this is not like one whole formula. This is, a common, this is a coordinate point. So recognize that whatever I do here, that is supposed to equal negative 6. Whatever I simplify here, that's going to equal negative 2. So to solve for my y1 and x1, what I need to do is set two separate equations. Because obviously, to solve, we've got to have an equation. So I'm going to set this equal to negative 6. And this set equal to negative 2. So I have negative 3 plus x2 divided by negative 6. I'm sorry, divided by 2 equals negative 6. And then over here, I'll have negative 5 plus y2 divided by 2 equals negative 2. Now, what I'm going to want to do is use my inverse operations to solve. So to do that, I'll multiply by 2 on both sides to get rid of the 2 off the denominator. Well, when I multiply by 2, and divide by 2. Those divide out to 1. So I'm left with negative 3 plus x2 equals negative 12. Um, over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to undo dividing by 2. So I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. Those now divide into 1. And I'm left with negative 5 plus y2 equals negative 4. All right, perfect. So now, what I simply need to do is use my inverse operations again to solve for x2. So since I'm subtracting by 3, I'll add a 3 on both sides. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that I have x2 is now equal to negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. And using my inverse operations, I'll add a 5 to both sides. And therefore, I have y2 equals positive 1. So my new endpoint is going to be negative 9 comma 1. And let's go and plot that. Let's go back to our original graph and see if that makes sense. Can we plot that point and will it make sense? So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, roughly, and then positive 1. 
And so you can see, yeah, I was pretty close on my estimate, right? I was just a little off, but I was just sketching that in there. So therefore, you can see by setting each of these coordinates in my midpoint formula, setting them equal to my, um, set them equal to my midpoint, I can then solve for my missing coordinate of my endpoint. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the endpoint when given one endpoint and a midpoint. Thanks.